Hello, everybody. I hope everybody's here. My name is Johanna St. Michaels, and I'm here to present our uh, webinar this um, lunch. Uh, WIFT, uh, Women in Film and Television, usually has these little lunch meetings. And um, I just want to say to everybody who's here that we are recording this before I start. And um, today, uh, we will meet two very special artists. They work with experimental filmmaking. Uh, first, I would like to introduce uh, Dagie Brunde. She arrived from Berlin this weekend. <laughs> and she's here on the scholarship that uh, Västergötaland and WIFT is sponsored for the month of May. And that uh, she has been working with experimental films for the last 30 years, and she specializes in Super 8 film and uh, eco developers. And uh, she's going to explain about this later, I hope. Um, she's known as a botanical film alchemist, and um, her films are often very personal, and I find them very humorous. Let's see what you think. And she has received the Lifetime Achievement Award for her Super 8 Films and Imagines Festival, Image Festival, and Open Air Festival. And um, the other artist today is Maria Magnusson. She's located here in Gothenburg at Konstepidemien. Can you wave so we see you, Maria? <laughs> and uh, she works with found footage, ar archive material, and combines analog and digital film methods. And she likes to examine subject matters such as uh, memory, dreams, the unconscious, identity, and subcultures. And she's been shown around the world at short film festivals such as um, uh, Short Film Festival Oberhausen, LA Film Forum, Echo Park Film Center, Antimatter Film Festival, and many more. And I thought today what we would do is that uh, Dagi and Maria will present uh, what they've been inspired of, from whom she, they've been inspired and also show clips from their own films. And then we have a, a little discussion after, and after that we we'll take questions. So please welcome Dougie Brunder oh, okay. first. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'm just, just I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. I'm totally thrilled and I'm absolutely happy to be guest here at Concepidemie in Jutuboy. And um, I just came over here Saturday night and I'm, installing myself and I already began to film and I'm I'm just totally happy so um, as Johanna said I've been making Super 8 films for over 30 years now which is really far more than half of my life and um, I just just started by somehow by coincidence I, I studied um, art in Berlin in Germany and in my early 20s, I was, I was not decided at all in which direction I would evolve. I did some photography, some drawing, some, some just laid back stuff. I didn't really have a hurry these days. The 80s were pretty relaxed. And uh, one day our professor came to us students and brought, brought a Super 8 camera with him and, and said, you can use that. And since then, I mean, before that, I knew what cinema is and I went to, to see films, but I never really actually thought about it making films my own, myself. So I took this camera that looked almost like this beautiful Nizo thingy here. And um, at these days, it was quite easy to, to get Super 8 films because they were sold everywhere. So I just bought some, some Kodak films and uh, did my first experiments, sent them off to a laboratory. Two weeks later, I got the film back and I thought, wow, this is it. This is so damn easy. I can set up my, my, my worlds for animation. I can just go outside and film something. It is so easy. And the bug bit me then. This was the beginning of my Super 8 career. And I, I would have never thought that it would go for, for all of my life until now. So I started with animation films. I started color and black and white. And uh, after some years, I found that the laboratories were closing one after the other. It was the 80s and then it was the 90s and there was almost no, no uh, laboratory left. So I started to develop my, the films myself. Uh, since I did this beforehand, I had a dark room. I did some photography, black and white photography mainly. So it was easy for me to develop the films myself. And then later I discovered color is possible too. And um, yeah, like more and more, 
the labs disappeared and all the, the Super 8 brands disappeared as well. So I, I just took expired films. Now there's only Kodak producing a fresh film anymore, but all the other ones are dead, more or less. So I have a large box of expired films and expired is really expired, like 40 years old, 50 years old film that no, normally nobody would uh, develop anymore, but I do it. And um, I don't know, like, like maybe 10 or 12 years ago, I was a little bit fed up with all the chemistry and I thought, wouldn't there be an alternative to all this toxic stuff? And I, I found out about caffeinol. Caffeinol is the magic word, C-A-F-F-E-N-O-L, based on coffee. The ending of the word is O-L, because normally all the developers end with O-L, like documol and rodinol, neutol, and all the words. So they called it caffeinol. It was actually not me who invented it. It was some, some other people, some students, checking around if there would be alternatives. So you see it's a worldwide wave going on to find alternatives. I checked it out, it's, it's made of coffee, instant coffee, vitamin C and washing soda. There's always the three components. It's one sour, bitter stuff like caffeic acid. It's one other little acid like vitamin C and washing soda, which is the opposite, it's an alkaline. So this has to come together and this is a very genuine, very super developer. So I started developing all my films, not all, but mostly all of my black and white films using caffeinol. And then I thought, if coffee is possible, why not red wine? Red wine has bitter parts too. And then fruit, and then berries, and then leaves, and tree bark, and mushrooms. So I, I was really going crazy with all this, this developing. And the good thing is that the results are so good. It's, it's really comparable to, to regular developers. As I was absolutely thrilled and intrigued. And since then, I'm, since then I'm doing this. And uh, yeah, this is it. This is my work. And, and for more, I mean, it's not only about uh, developing, but it's also the content of the film. Sometimes reflects and matches to the, to the outer world of how I develop it, because I love to work locally. So I am at a certain spot in the world. I am there. I look around what I find. I have a little idea in my mind. That's how I approach to making films. I, I just open my eyes and see what's around me. And I, the ideas just come flying to me. This is working every time. And then I pick up stuff that, that is growing locally. And then I, it, comes, it comes all together. So as if I would be the, the alchemistic medium or something for ideas and soups, eco soups that come onto me. And uh, I am a mill, so I mill everything inside me and inside the, the camera and out comes a film, hopefully transporting exactly what I want to be transported. Okay. Are my 15 minutes over? No, I have no idea. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> So maybe I start just showing the, the three little pieces um, that you, because Johanna asked us to, to put together a 30 second piece of, of a woman who inspired us and then an early piece of myself and a late piece of myself. So I would really like to share my screen now and hope it works. So first you're gonna see a little 30 second piece of, of one very old film that inspired me a lot. It's, um, it's called Tausend Schönchen. In English it's called Daisies by the Czech uh, filmmaker Vera Chitilova. It is from 66 and it is a piece of film that uh, I saw when I was very young, like in my early 20s, and I saw, wow, so this is possible. You can be really punkish, you can be, it's basically about two women who are playfully destroying their world around us. They, they're playing with everything. They are mocking old men. They are mocking society in a very, very, very beautiful and playful way. So if you have the chance to watch the film, uh, originally it's called, um, oh God, what am I? Um, Sid. I forgot the, the Czech name, sorry, but it's called um, Daisies in English. Vera Chitilova, very beautiful. And then I stop before I show you my piece. So I'm going to share the screen now. And um, QuickTime Player, Mind Film 4, double click. And I want to show it full screen. Oh, wait, full screen. 
again, full screen. Can you see the starting picture? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just sharing it now. Bam. Yeah, that was really not easy to cut the film into into pieces. But uh, yeah, when, when I watched it like two days ago, thinking about it, I saw how much it really inspired me. It really inspired me to act as myself as an actor, to just play around and not to have any respect against everything and not to be to be fearful of 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 making embarrassing stuff it's just and the, she, she plays so well with different styles this is what i like so much color and black and white a little animation here a little animation there and uh yeah i mean That's true film, also Dagi, that you are a graphic designer oh yes so I, I mean this is very graphic in a way isn't it it's very graphic in a way this is true this cut up style for example it's just like yeah it's well layouted i would say as a layout or this is true mm. and I, I mean this sorry i didn't want to interrupt you no no i think it's a beautiful piece and i i also find this very inspiring as a woman that there was woman, so, yes. yeah the, it was made so early and it was so free in a way yes it was so free yeah just two years before the soviets came into the Czech czechoslovakia republic yeah. and she was she was kicked out of high of, of uh, film school Whereas mm. she had some some free years at school at sixty six. It was like a new new wave in Czechoslovakia then, and they just they just could work around and explore and 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 be so free and do so yeah just freestyle filming. And this is uh, this film is sixty years old. It's just amazing. Yes, really, yeah, really, I love it. Okay, so the, the next piece is one of, is it this one? I hope so. Uh, it's one of my early films I made in 1994 and uh, I was just playing around and it's, it's my first color film that I developed myself. It is an Orvo, Orvo is the GDR brand, Super 8 brand and uh, I developed it myself and it is called Bruder und Schwester im, im Schnee, Bror, um, what is sister in Swedish? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, brother, brother and sister in the snow. It is brother and sister in the snow. Good. Da -da -da. English we can translate. <laughs> we don't see anything. Or oh, do why not? Oh, I see. It says in screen sharing wurde unterbrochen. You have to go over to the next. Um, you have, have to, to click on that. Too. Bildschirm freigeben. Yes, you have to go to that screen and click on it. Okay, so where's my film gone? There it is. Oh uh, no, this is this is brother and sister in the snow. I can oh full screen. Okay. I think it works now. Yeah, and you have to go back to the beginning. Oh, start. Yes. yes, better. If I saw you now, I <laughs> okay. 
okay and then i'm coming you still see me i still see me this is a uh, last film is from just from this winter from yeah from this winter called dalai dalai and this is one of my freshest asking myself why the Dalai Lama, why they don't come back as girls, why they don't reincarnate as girls. Mm. And do you know, by the way, what Dalai Lama means? Lama is the enlightened one and Dalai means ocean. Ocean are just huge. And you know what? That will change too. Yeah, 30 seconds is really too short. Please watch my films in whole length. This is just, but maybe you got an expression what I'm doing. So I'm stopping this. Okay, I'm back. This is it. Mm, fantastic. Thank you. We get back to speak more about your films after uh, Maria's presentation, but that was great. Thank you so much. So um, Maria, it's yeah. your turn. <laughs> hey, thank you very much for inviting me to this conversation. I really enjoy it. Uh, well, from the beginning, I'm a photographer. So that's my background. And I guess that's why I started with filmmaking. Actually, I did it when I went to my master's. And I felt uh, trapped in the single still image too. And so I started to work with video a bit, but then I also were more into uh, when you are just staging a scene that uh, taking, it was very colored of a photographer's point of view. And perhaps I suppose I'm usually, I'm still have that point of view in a way, but uh, what I liked about when I get to, got to know the uh, experimental film scene was the DIY, I got inspired by the DIY that you can play around more with, uh, you can combine different uh, medium, mediums uh, and you can do whatever you please. There is no rules. And that's very nice about it, I think. And usually I work, I started to work, the first film that I'm going to show was when I, uh, and it's from uh, uh, 2010, so it's not that uh, old. But uh, then I uh, played around with uh, slideshows, slides i mean uh, uh i got i got a sound that i got uh, i got to know a sound from uh, uh delia derbyshire the the electro acoustic uh, pioneer uh, that in the 60s she begins to do video low uh, tape loops and playing around with tape recorders and loops in the 60s and she worked together with Roin Grainer and for the BBC they did this TV sci-fi TV series called Doctor Who and uh, so I got to know this uh, sound from her call that she did for the BBC and uh, it was called Inventions for, for Radio Dreams. And uh, this sound I got first and I was searching for pictures what to get something that I really was pleased with this uh, sound. And then I um, inherited um, some uh, family slides from the 60s, more snapshot, snapshots like. And also I wanted um, uh, to do this, um, uh, own black and white oil slides. And that is when you take a slides and you have the glass and, and 
at the glass you take oil and then you take uh, like black ink and then you put them together and then you put it inside the, uh, the slide projectors and when it uh, gets heated the surface started to make a movement hmm. so that is the first film that I'm going to show uh, now I've got a hat <laughs> and um, a great, sorry, no, a great uh, inspirator, a great source of ins inspirator. I mean, I have a lot of inspired artists and filmmakers that has uh, inspired me a lot. Also, uh, film festivals that I have been uh, attended to, like uh, 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 mm, it's called. Uh, Sorry. Antimatter Film Festival. <laughs> a really great, great, great film festival that I that I've been to. And it has inspired me a lot as well. But the first person, the great source of inspiration is our own in Sweden, Gunvor Nelson. And she's a pioneer in experimental filmmaking. She's a Swedish artist and international recognized big time. Uh, born in 1931. She worked at the San Francisco Art Institute until 1992. I was late in rec recognizing her. I didn't know that we had such a good, not good, I mean, such a great experimental female filmmaker in Sweden. So I was so happy when I, when I noticed her. And uh, she refers to her filmmaking as personal films. And the clip that I want to show is uh, a collaboration between Gunn von Elson and Dorothy Wiley. And the film is called Schmergans from 1965. And uh, the first time I saw this one, I thought, wow, also, <laughs> the collage technique. I mean, I like to work in the collage technique uh, and also, and it's very playful, like Daugis uh, inspirators too. And the theme is female. And uh, in my point of view, I think it, she has a really anarchistic approach or they have in this film. Uh, in how, what it is to be a woman. So now I'm going to show this one. Let's give see her. Share. I, do you see my no, we don't see your screen. Okay. It's now, going. now I think we do. I'm in here. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then. Okay. Cool. Uh, I move you here. Schmerz. Yes. Good. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Good. <laughs> in all the world. Her hair lay all about her face, like a pool in the bottom sunlight. Long lashes lay on her cheeks, like delicate sunbeams. And her lips were parted, as though she was about to whisper her name. The prince knelt and kissed the princess gently. She stirred in her sleep, and then slowly her eyes opened. Thank you. 
Okay. So, yeah. I thought this film was great and uh, uh, this, I think this was their first time, their first collaboration and the first time to approach the film medium and they uh, did this, 50, it's 15, me 15 uh, minutes long and they uh, send it into the Ann Arbor Film Festival and it won, won the first prize. So that's pretty cool. And this was 1965. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show my first film then. See right. <laughs> yep. So this is the film that I started to talk about. I remember my dreams by the color they are and the Delia Derbyshire. Here it comes. All colored. I remember my dreams by the color they are. The colors that you see in churches. Bright blues and yellows and reds. Blue and yellow and green. Red and green and blue and orange. The colors that you see in churches. Green. Yellow, orange, greys and greens, red, black, green, black and blue. Sometimes it, it is blue and so. Yep. Such nice effect. I didn't know about those uh, glass slides. Well, that's one thing they did in the 60s too. <laughs> yeah. The very nice effect. Them. Okay. And uh, so this last film is uh, a collaboration or maybe I'm too fast now. No, if, I think you're gonna do whatever you like. <laughs> okay. So I go forward to the last film that is uh, going to be finished this week. So uh, we are, uh, it's a bit hectic. It's going to be showed at um, uh, next week on uh, Beat, no. uh, Lars Palm. Gallery Lars Palm in Sandviken at KF Beatbox Bolag. So it has to be ready this weekend. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about you know the the energy and the batteries that you're showing together with this film? Can you do that? Or? Yeah, this uh, this film um, this film is a, a collaboration between Vague Research. Studios, Kaisa, G. Eriksson and Lena Berlin, and me. And for, for a year ago, we started the experimental art project called Technology Use as Ritual and Resistance. And the fruit of this collaboration is this, this film, Ritual, which explores energy greed as a societal phenomenon and rituals as an artistic me method. So that's um, okay. I think I start to show it now, and then I then I um, talk a little bit me more about this film ritual. Okay. Uh, I has I have to say also that 
The sound and the voice is done by Clara, Clara Andersson. And she's a sound artist. And then the graphics is done by Miljana Karlsson. So it's a collaboration between, well, five persons. But the film, we, it's me, Kajsa and Lena that has been really working together. Våra äldre, äldre mödrar födde oss på 60-talet, in i ett energigivigt samhälle som sedan dess vill ha ännu mer och tjäna som en oändlig tillgång på energi. Det blev vi så energigiriga. Det finns en okänd närvaro och närvarande. En bortglömd, nonchalerad och osynlig närvaro. Nu är tid för en okänd närvaro att presentera sig själv. Thank you so much. Um, so, would you like to say something more, Maria? Yeah, I would like to say that um, this film, uh, Ritual, is the, the longest film that I have been doing. It's uh, actually going to be a novel film, 50 minutes. And uh, it's uh, filmed both digitally and analog and uh, the analog parts is done by 60 millimeter bolex camera and uh, high con film and then i de hand developed it in eco and plant-based developer so each place uh, and uh, we are uh, visiting from the south in Sweden, Buscherid, uh, uh, up till Jokkmokk, far up in the north, eight different places. And uh, also at this, uh, um, these different places we do this, we have done another part of the film is, is uh, where we use fitogram. Mm -hmm. And fitograms are an analog, analog photographic technique where you use the plants and flowers own chemical set plus um, organic developer and you make imprints directly on the film emulsion without using a camera and so all these different eight places that we have been to we have done this photogram ritual and uh, picked uh, flowers and uh, uh, leaves and whatever that we found at those different places in in order to to get to know the the place to get the feeling for the place so a little bit like doggy mm. so we have a lot of common uh, threads how we how we work in a way and uh, also i want to say that the photogram refers to the first female photographer Anna Atkins, and she was born 1799. And she did the fo she did pho photographs of British elk, uh, Sunatime impressions, 1843. So this is the first female photographer. Yeah, I say. <laughs> Yay! And then also we have Carl Dewing, that is a uh, experimental filmmaker artist and he developed this process further 
and gave it the name Phytograms. So we have to thank him too for this <laughs> Phytograms. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm ready with the with the open. Yes, thank yeah. you so much. But very interesting. I find it very interesting both of your work. And I my when I watched your work, one of my first question being a digital uh, person. I rarely worked now in film, even I'm trained on film as a photographer. I found why super eight millimeter and why film? Why not sculpture? Why not uh, wood? You're interested in, in land and you both flowers. Um, could you answer that? Why is film so important to you? Should yes. Yeah. Go. Well, I think uh, my background as uh, I'm more into the two dimensional uh, media, and uh, it's maybe also a way how how you see things artistically and that sort of thing. And uh, uh, for me, the I mean, the digital is a really good way of doing things as well, but the emulsion, I mean, when, uh, when, when uh, we used to do, uh, we used to go to the dark room to develop film or to do develop the, the prints and that sort of thing, it was a lot of magic. So that's why I have been going back, trying to go find my way back to uh, the analog methods and I didn't know where to find them here in Sweden so I had to go to I went to Canada <laughs> yeah mm. to find how to uh, work with that and I was happy to to be able to uh, um, to be at this film farm residency that Phil Hoffman has and that was my very first time that I could use 60 millimeter and film and then hand develop it myself. And I was in heaven. <laughs> no. It's interesting. And you, Dougie, why, why film and why not sculpture? Yeah, because uh, it's the only, I, I, I mean, since, since my childhood, I was always tinkering around doing small stuff myself. I was a lonely kid. <laughs> I just love to, to to work in my little bubble and explore little things. So it came photography. I can't make sculptures, I just can't do it. And drawing, I'm not good at drawing. So I, I wanna capture, I wanna capture time and feeling and uh, yeah, time and I mean photography is, is engraving sun on, a, on, on, on something. It's the emulsion, either the emulsion is on a still photo or is in motion, which is uh, even better for me. So just, uh, I want to tell little stories. I'm a, I'm a storyteller and this is just uh, the best medium. And uh, besides the Super 8, I'm, I discovered uh, pinhole photography as another big passion for me. But for me, it's, I'm using, <laughs> I brought you something. My very favorite pinhole camera is made from, made from a coffee can and I've been traveling around with this camera since 2008. I started in Los Angeles at the Echo Park Film Center that we can come to later. But this is also, pinhole is so cool because it has a very long exposure time. And with this long exposure time, I also capture time, a period of time and a scenery. And this is, uh, this is just it. My heart is melting when I think about images and the material oh yeah material video is fine but not for me because i don't understand pixels i understand grains i know what is happening inside an emulsion i know what it's made of i know exactly what happens when light falls on these little silver salts and how they are being transformed when i develop them with different stuff and this is almost like witchery i the more i do it the more i get into the matter and this is super fascinating nothing else matters. Because that leads me to <clears throat> my next question. I mean, you both talking very much about the process and the developing and, and it's, I mean, it takes, it's almost all the joy. Is it like a handy uh, craft if you would like? Could you talk a little bit more about that? How, how you work with the film then and how you develop? You pick flowers and then you... <laughs> cook them and then you... Exactly. <laughs> yes, 
Good like this. Uh, it is so fascinating because as a kid you were forbidden to don't play with food, but now we can. We just play with food because we. I just love to share and I love to to pick something of the surroundings around me to pick up something from nature, which is such a wide, wild, fantastic uh, abundance of of material that we just have around us. We don't need these big companies and buy chemical, toxical stuff from them. We can, we, there's so much wisdom. There's so much wisdom about uh, a knowledge about how can you use your everyday stuff. For example, you can use your daily compost. Did you know that? I'm researching on that. I'm using my today banana peels and some tea. And I will later develop a piece of film in exactly that. And isn't this amazing? Because we are, we're destroying our beautiful planet. I, I don't want to be part of that. So I, I just, I'm combined, com, um, connected with many, many people just like Maria and other people who are really caring for this world and who, who pick up some flowers, but not all of them because we are not greedy. We just want to take some parts of them and transform our art, our expression using it. Yeah, and also there is, when it comes to this, when you're making the own process, the hand processing and that sort of thing, there can be mistakes oh, yeah. that you can, that you, instead of getting uh, sad about it, you, you embrace them and then you make them, you can uh, make them to uh, a part of the, uh, the artistic expression. And, and also, I mean, about the digital, the digital is too perfect. It's, I mean, if you see a person that has been taken by a picture digitally, you see the pores and you see everything. It's like, it's hyper real. And I'm, I'm, I don't like that. I like, you can play around with the surface when you have, uh, when you have this, um, uh, You mean the grain? The grain, also, yeah, the grain, but also, I mean, the dust, the mm. whatever, I mean the scratches and, and it become, you can make the film physical. So you can feel when you see, see it, you can, you can underdraw feelings and yeah. So that's also a very nice part with this. And I mean, it's cheap. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's also, yeah, it's cheap. And it's also, I mean, it's mm -hmm. good for the environment. And also, um, it's and would you say it's cheaper and digital? No. Well, I mean, it's more fun because it becomes, <laughs> it becomes a part of the filmmaking. It yeah. becomes a part, a, a, an important part of the filmmaking. I, was I, can, I can completely understand because I, I used to, I mean, I'm a photographer and I used to work with real film and I miss the work of, um, being in the dark room and it becomes a handiwork. I mean, it was very interesting in, when I lived in New York and, and, and um, we did all black and white prints, obviously. Uh, and then a few years, like in the beginning of the 2000s, I came back to New York and nobody knew how to print a black and white print. And I got paid humongous amount of money to print like archive prints. Mm -hmm. for a while because everybody wanted archive prints and and that handiwork I missed that in the digital now you just sit in front of the computer and so uh, I completely understand that would you say analog film is um, what would you call it? would it influence your subject matter as well how would it rather than digital film would you say it or is it the same? Would you do the same subjects if you did use digital film? For me, it would be impossible. For me, just like Maria said, you, it would be too too perfect and too hyper real. She said, or hyper real. And uh, it doesn't have magic for me. Everything must be some kind of magic. This is why I, I'm stuck to Super 8 because it's sometimes it has these weird, 
<laughs> corners that are not really in, in, in focus. And sometimes like, like embracing accident is one very, very, very super important uh, aspect of it, embracing coincidence. I work, I work with coincidence and I wouldn't be, I, 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 I mean, I do little iPhone uh, films every now and then just for Instagram and for pleasure, but I don't consider that as art. It's just uh, for me, not. I, I need this, this haptic, haptic, wonderful, magical feeling, yeah, no way. Yeah, I agree, I agree. And also, I mean, if, if uh, I've been working with this found footage, it's also, <clears throat> you have that, you can, you can, I like to go with layers, working layers very much also. And um, yeah, well. <laughs> So <clears throat> if I was a young filmmaker today and I wanted to get into this community of analog filmmaking and uh, uh, echo berry developing, <laughs> how would I go about it? Take a camera and run. Take a camera and run and uh, play around. Don't expect too much. Don't have a gigantic script or a super gigantic film idea before you not even have to make your, your first attempt and super eight, but just, just go out and play. Buy a simple camera. It doesn't have to be this uh, high class need. So it can be a, a very super simple super eight camera and get, get some, some film. It's not too expensive and just run around and film. And then connect to people like us, or if you're on Facebook, there's, there are many different super eight groups. There's even a Cafe Noel group that is very, very open and very, very much sharing all recipes. And if you have questions, they, they can't be silly. There's no silly questions, just ask them. So my experience with the community is just fantastic. Or for example, you can read it here. There's my, my recipe blog called yum yum soups. Dot, <laughs> Uh, can you read? Yeah, here, yum yum soups dot, um, you know, Yeah, WordPress. Uh, WordPress.com, for example. <laughs> I share all recipe, all, everything that I ever developed in the, the fanciest soups, they are written for everybody to use. That's very uh, nice of you and giving and open. And, then, and I mean, it's easy to find a super eight camera at the thrift, uh, thrift stores. And um, if you like to uh, digitalize the film, then uh, Daugi, she gave me this uh, contact to, you have screenshots in Berlin mm -hmm. that are really good. What does it cost about to digitize, I will say one roll of film from start to end. What does it cost? Uh, 25 euros, so it's 250 kroner. Yeah, and that's three minutes, or so then that's three, three, uh, some minutes. Yeah, and uh, yeah, like, yes, it's, somebody. it's only like ten bucks more. This is really, and it's high HD. It's really high class. So, uh, I don't know about Sweden companies. There are some here as well, and uh, this is very cool because it doesn't. Uh, one, one last sentence for I edit my films digitally. For example, I shoot everything on Super 8, and then I have the, the telescene and uh, edit as the films digitally because the quality is so high and you can still when you project it on, on a um, in a film festival or for example i do it all digitally and the quality is still super super good and you see every grain it doesn't get lost this is cool that's very nice mm -hmm. and um well, i have one last question before we open up uh, for if somebody has questions i hear you guys talking a lot about communities and also camps, or is it hard to get into these kind of camps and, and the workshops? And I know you, Maria, have been traveling and around the world. In very, it sounds very interesting that you get, you know, go to Canada or Mexico or... Hi, Sarah. How do you find those places? You have to uh, make research for a first thing. And for me, it wasn't that I didn't know well, I didn't know anything in Sweden, maybe. So, uh, but um, uh, for instance, I mean, there is this, there is uh, a social environmental movement, a slow film movement. And I mean, it's this nerdiness to really explore alternative um, and historical ways of mu using the methods 
how to make film and that sort of thing. So we have a film farm in uh, Mount Forest, Canada. We have a collective in Toronto called Site Plus Cycle and Film for Artists. Uh, there is this uh, uh, Echo Park Film Center in LA and they also have Echo Park Film Center in uh, Vancouver. And it's by Lisa M. Moore and Paolo Davanzo are running this and they are more like a creative hub, you can say. And um, making a lot of workshops for um, elders and uh, free for youngsters, you can say, and kids. And then there is this film collective in Vancouver also. Uh, mm -hmm. Dauge, you know more about Europe, I think. I mean, there is, uh, in Berlin, there are some. Yeah, there's Labor Berlin. It's a, they're, they're popping up many labors, labors worldwide who, who, who care for um, analog film, 60 millimeter mostly, and they collect old machines that have been thrown out by laboratories with clothes and they collect them. And sometimes it's possible to take workshops there. Uh, there are filmmakers who give workshops. Uh, I, me, I've been giving um, uh, workshops for for many many years now I've started to give them online maybe at concept you mean there will be one uh, I don't know in two weeks maybe uh, a zoom workshop about uh, complex oh. film developing I think so I'm preparing that and if you just do some research you will immediately fall upon these uh, beautiful spots that Maria mentions and there's help everywhere and uh, they are everybody is very very helpful in not keeping keeping all the secrets from, from uh, for themselves we, we are, we just share it all because it belongs to everybody. Film belongs to everybody. <laughs> Good. Well, um, I wanted to open up and see if somebody in the audience has any questions because we only have a few minutes left. Um, so is there anybody who is listening that want to put a question for Maria or for Dougie? Show your faces. <laughs> they are all... They will seek it. Oh, gone away. Hello. <laughs> I think they just may be listening. Yeah. Muted. Yeah. Yeah, they were muted. I guess nobody has any questions. Is this something that you guys want to say before we finish? <sighs> Keep up your good mood. Don't be afraid. Come on, uh, Dougie, here is a question. Let's see. Dougie, will you screen your films while you are here? Uh, why not? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I can make a, a digital screen, a film show. I haven't thought about it. I'm here for four weeks very happily. And uh, yeah, maybe. And check out for information on the Concept Mini website and be friends with us on Facebook and on Instagram or whatever. Yeah, why not? Yeah. I'll and be you can Find all our films, Maria's and my films, they are all on Vimeo free you can just check them out and uh, don't hesitate to contact us via this website or instagram everything yeah and you can also have some uh, you're gonna have some workshops when you're here right i think so yes okay it's secret still <laughs> um so yeah i hear everybody says thank you from orland is somebody and thank you very inspiring so many thanking you but I want to say thank you so much. Thank you for doing this at the, our lunch. <laughs> and uh, it'd be wonderful to listen to you too. And, and good luck with everything. And we're looking so forward to see Ritual coming. Um, and also seeing uh, what you're going to be up to when you're here, Dougie. So please... Uh, Keep in touch and look at Constepidemine's webpage. Uh, we might list everything there, right, John? We're going to put everything up that is happening. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, and thank also, you very much. Yeah, yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Yeah. Bye. Thanks a lot. Good night, Mongolia.